Okay, so we're going through this uh, Dynamics Tutorial 1 question 3. So as you can see, there's a crank slider mechanism shown in this figure. And this crank rotates at a constant angular velocity at theta equals to omega t. And the length of the crank of OA and AB are constants. So they are R and L respectively. So what this question wants us to do is to find the position vector of point A and point B followed by the velocity vectors and the center vectors of A and B. To do this question, I will solve A and B separately. So I'll solve everything about A, so basically the position vector, velocity vector, and the section vector of A, followed by B, because B is much more complicated than A. For position vector A, it's very simple. We can express it in a polar coordinate, as shown over here. So position vector of A is R, respect to some angular displacement. Angular displacement is measured from the positive x direction in a counterclockwise manner. Okay? So over here is positive theta. So position vector of A is r cosine theta in the i direction and r sine theta in the j direction. What I've done here is just simply resolving the polar vector into rectangular coordinates. Okay? With that, I can substitute theta equals to omega t into theta over here. And what we have is this r cosine omega t in the i direction and r sine omega t in the j direction. Now we have the position vector of A. So how do we find the velocity vector of A? It's just a time derivative of position vector of A. So I differentiate this entire equation with respect to t and this is what I get. Velocity of A is negative r omega sine omega t in the i direction plus r omega cosine omega t in the j direction. To find a section of A, I just have to differentiate this velocity vector one more time with respect to time and I'll find the section vector of A which is negative r omega square cosine omega t in the i direction and negative r omega square sine omega t in the j direction. So there we have it, the acceleration, in the, the, acceleration, the acceleration vector of A. Now we need to find what's the position vector of B. So how can we find the position of a vector of V? First, we know that position vector of V is constrained within the I direction. Basically, it can only move left or right. It cannot move up and down. I split this problem into uh, two halves, where RB, which is this horizontal line over here, is split into two paths. So the blue path and the red path, which is X1 and X2. Okay? So how do we find X1? X1, I drew this red color triangle to allow you to see it a lot more clearly. So we can use Pythagoras theorem to find what is x1. As we know what's the vertical portion of this triangle, which is simply r sine theta. Hypotenuse is just the constant length of L. And very easily we can find what's x1 using Pythagoras theorem. Okay? So for x2 it's just r cosine theta, which is over here. With, with these two equations, I can combine these two equations to find what's rb. So this is the position vector of rb okay and this is constraint in the i direction now this is very simple next to find velocity vector of b i need to differentiate this in terms of t okay prior to that i will change this data to omega t as shown over here and then i'll do the differentiation okay to do this differentiation is very simple uh, when you differentiate cosine omega t, you can bring out omega because it's the by chain rule you can bring it out. And differentiate cosine becomes negative sine. Therefore, there's a negative sign over here. Now, how do we differentiate this? Now it's quite tough, huh? but we have this uh, hint over here. If p is significantly smaller than one, then we can have one minus p to the power of half, which is approximately one minus half of p. Okay. And what we have over here in part C, we know that R is significantly smaller than L, which is this OA, much more smaller than AB. So we need to relate this to the hint that we have over here. Okay? Now, since R is significantly smaller than L, I'll try to have the expression such that 1 over P to the power of half, which is the same as square root of 1 minus P, equals to 1 minus half of P. Okay? We know that in this derivative, the hardest part is within the square root. Okay, so we need to simplify this square root equation into something else. So we bring out the square root over here. 
Now we're gonna must we must make this in this form one minus some uh, some function of p. So over here, I have length of square minus some function, but I must make it such that it's one minus something. So how can I do this? I multiply by one, which is square root length square over square root length square, which is equivalent to one now, So you don't really change the equation. Once you multiply this in, you simplify, and then this is what you get. Okay, so you got length to the product of 1 minus r over length square sine square omega t. Now you have this. Now, once you have this, then we can express it in this simplified form, which is over here. So you bring out the length and 1 minus half of r over l square sine square omega t. So in this case, we know that p is actually r over l square sine square omega t. Now we express this as equation 2. We know that there's equation 1 over here. So I just substitute this into this to get rid of the square root, uh, which is the power half. And then this is what we get, velocity vector of b. But we have yet to differentiate it, so we're not completely done yet. This is complicated because there's a sine square omega t. So how do we get rid of sine square omega t? We recall that there's a trigonometry power reduction formula, such as sine square x equals to 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. Then, I just need to substitute this, uh, change this into something that we are using in this uh, question, which is sine square omega t. Sine square omega t is 1 minus cosine 2 omega t over 2. Then just put this into here. And then this is what you get. Now, just simplify whatever is inside the different uh, the function that you're going to differentiate. And once you simplify, it will look something like this. Then you will differentiate this. So when you differentiate 1, it gives you 0. When you differentiate uh, 1 quarter of r over l square, you know that all of these are constant because r is a constant, l is a constant. Hence, when you differentiate a constant, it will go to 0. Okay? Over here, r over l square you know is a constant however cosine 2 omega t is not a constant so when you differentiate cosine 2 omega t you bring out the 2 and then cosine when you differentiate become negative sine and when you bring out negative there's a negative uh, part of it over here so negative times negative gives you positive okay once you simplify this whole equation and you can get something like this get the Detailed simplification can be found over here. The solution that you receive in Blackboard uh, is quite brief. They don't show you step by step as a solution, so they skip quite a lot of steps. So in this, I show you what you would do step by step. Uh. It seems very tedious, but actually once you get the hang of it, you can do it really fast. Once you get velocity vector of b, then very simply, you just differentiate it one more time with respect to the time and then you can find acceleration of b, which is over here. And that's it, very simple. Huh? All right.